Hey guys, what's up? Green Machine Tam back with another video. And today we have Tennessee Titans franchise off season. So this is mainly going to be the re-sign period, free agency, and anything else after that. Of course, this is a big time for us with a lot of potential to change how this franchise is going to go. We have $133 million in cap. We only have 42 players currently on the roster. And a lot of those guys could be active cuts just based off of contracts ending it within the next year or just them being bad enough to where we need to replace them. I think that's a big thing that we do need to state. So our goals for this offseason is, of course, go out and redefine the trenches, both on the offensive and the defensive side of the ball, especially on the lines. You know, that defensive line was very weak last year. We lost a lot of pieces, including Tier Tart, who we are not going to keep. This is the restarted restarted franchise because when I started the original Tennessee Titans franchise, it had the draft class glitch. So we weren't going to continue to go with that and then end up having, you know, a, an amazing draft and then, of course, not being able to have a good, you know, draft class because of the glitch. Terrell Edmonds, Jack Givens, Kelvin Joseph, Thomas Graham, Chris Jackson, Eric Garr, Tyler Shelvin, Chance Campbell, Josh Thompson, and Trevon Wesco are all free agents. These are guys that were just the last of the last. And these are guys that I actively gave myself a chance to go out and get. Jack Gibbons is a guy that I do want to keep around 25, 74 overall. He is somebody that looks potentially very good. He's going to go test out free agency. Terrell Edmonds is a guy that I kind of want to bring back. A lot of these guys I would love to bring back, but under the correct contracts. If you don't know, in the re-sign period, players are always going to ask for more money. It's a, either a yes or a no. It's not a maybe. It's not a let me decide. It's always a yes or a no decision. So you can all... If if it's a player that you think isn't going to get many contract offers in free agency, you should probably let them walk towards free agency and then try to pick them up there. Now, you could end up spending more money in free agency just because of the fact that, you know, other teams might have interest in them. Like I said, we do want to define both sides of the ball. We want to go after both offensive and defensive linemen in this free agency, no matter how good or bad they are, no matter how expensive they are. We do want to go after some guys, redefine this defensive line. If we can redefine this defensive line and offensive line, it could shape up to be a better season. You know, we were one of the worst teams last year against the run and the pass. It was mainly because we couldn't rush the passer. And then on the opposite side, we didn't have a whole ton of time to throw the ball. Looking at some of the veteran free agencies, there's definitely options on both sides of the ball of whether or not who we want to go after. You know, a lot of these guys are veterans, so we can give them one or two year deals, expensive one or two year deals, and then get out from underneath that contract after a year or two, depending on how much we actually give them, right? That is something we do need to define a lot. One thing I will say uh, before we get to the draft and more free agency stuff, the first and second year of franchises, I normally boost the draft classes. So you're going to see what happens. I didn't even boost that many positions. It's just some of the positions already have high overalls. And when you boost certain other positions, they kind of go berserk. So in this first free agency week, I'm going after Tyron Smith, Leonard Williams, Taylor Lewan, Jack Gibbons, and another player. Look. I know Taylor Lewant, and I'm going after DJ Jones. He has super interest in us. He got cut by the Broncos. I think I cut DJ Jones in my first year with the Broncos as well. Look, Taylor Lewant can come in and play right tackle for us, maybe be that swing tackle, maybe be just be a good veteran guy. He has a mentor badge, which will help a lot. Leonard Williams, a defensive tackle. I'm going to go heavy after him, but both the, uh, both the, Texans and the Bears were going after him. We only ended up getting three of our guys, Jack Gibbons, Taylor Lewan, and Tyron Smith. So immediately our tackle positions are basically set going into the next week. Uh, DJ Wanham, Ch uh, Clayus Campbell, Tyrell Dotson, and Ter Terrell Edmonds are all guys that I'm going after. A lot of these guys, of course, are going to get one or two year deals and they're not going to get super expensive long-term deals. Look, I don't want to go after just the main free agents that everybody goes after to revamp this team, right? I want to go, I want to make this somewhat realistic in, in terms of being able to go out and sign guys that I think they could go after. We do end up getting Terrell Edmonds and Calais Campbell, who are both major upgrades at both positions. Terrell Edmonds could easily come in and fill in that for that free safety spot. Cleland Furl is another guy I want to go after. Still young. I really liked him coming out of college. He's 27. I'm going to give him a very expensive one-year deal. Drew Sample as well. Good blocking tight end. Third string guy. Could easily be 
a, a great addition to this offense. We did end up one guy ended up signing, and it wasn't to our team. We did end up losing DJ Wanham, who was a big guy that I did want to go get. I think he could have been an excellent rotational edge rusher for us slash permanent edge rusher and somebody else could have filled in on the run stopping downs we did end up deciding to go after Utier Gross Matos as a backup option he's a little bit less of an overall same age but has even more interest in us so we didn't have to pay him as much money as DJ Wanham which could end up helping us even more we do have some guys that are getting contract offers from other teams as well as some other guys that do need to sign DJ Jones I'm looking at you but in the signing period, so this would have been, so this would have been beginning of stage two. That was end of stage one. We did end up getting a couple more guys to sign, which is always nice. Cleveland Farrells, uh, he still wants to sign. Utira Gross Matos and Drew Sample all only have our offers, but they haven't signed yet. We will have to go after a couple other people as well. I'm going to be honest, I already recorded all of this once. I completely did free agency. I completely did the draft. And then I realized the audio was fucked. Like it was like unrepairable almost. With this target class, we're going after Stevenson, Drew Sample, Josiah DeGuara, Marquez Stevenson, Isaiah Hodgins, uh, Givens, Bo Melton, Clyde's Edward Hilaire, and others. Um, I don't think I missed anybody. Oh, and Cody Whitehair as a good backup center. Uh, I do want to say real quick. I, I want to make a video for Cody Whitehair and Eddie Jackson. I just don't know what I would want to make. I appreciate your guys' support. I know this is a Tennessee Titans franchise video, but thank you, uh, Eddie Jackson and Cody Whitehair, for the amazing years, especially 2018 and 19. Uh, that was the first season as a Bears fan after the Lovey Smith 2012 10 and 6 season that really felt like it was something, you know. Again, here in free agency, we did have to up Cleveland Furl's contract because the Bears are coming after him now, as well as the Cardinals. We're going after Fakuzi. At least I think that's how you say Fat Kuzi Kazi. Fat Kazi. Fakuzi. I don't know. I, I don't want to get his name wrong, but we can call him Double F, if anything. Chuma, Chuma Adoga, Trey Lance, and Trey Wolf all need to come here. Trey Wolf is our kicker. I do want to keep him as a storyline. I like big kickers. You know, they're six foot four, two oh five. He's fucking huge. Trey Lance, nobody's going after. Look, nobody's going after Trey Lance. There's no reason not to go ahead and try to get him. It just is what it is. He can come in, compete for that backup role, compete for that third string role, if anything. We did get a lot of people to sign, almost six players. If I do recount correctly. Jacuzzi and Farrell, DJ Jones, Cody Whitehair signed, Givens. Uh, Melton Hodgins, Yutir Grossmatos, Stevenson, and Wolf all signed. I know some of those guys might have been in one of the previous eval periods or stages, but just felt like rattling some of them off. Bobby Wagner, uh, we lost out on Terrell Dodson, so I'm going to go after Bobby Wagner here. Pat Pete, because he has the mentor badge. Both of them have a mentor badge, but I'm going after Bobby Wagner because he could actually play as well as Peterson could play that third string spot if we need him to. Caleb Von Chason has good speed and stuff for specialists as well as a decent edge rusher, uh, rotational guy. Darius Rush, 24, 6 foot 2, 93 speed, excellent special teamer. J Jacob Phillips, again, good special teamer, young, still 25. Josh Thompson, we do need to bring back the unsung hero of last season. He came up clutch so many fucking times. If you guys did not watch season one or you guys did not watch certain episodes, I will say this. Josh Thompson played well and above his fucking overall. I will say it once and I'll say it again. If you play above your overall, if you play and every single time I'm looking up and you're going and making a fucking play in Madden for some reason, I'm going to play you. I'm going to sign you. It's just what it is. I'm not going to continue. I'm not one of those people that's just like, oh, I'm going to put the best overalls on the field and call it a day. No, that's not how I roll. If I'm playing a franchise, if you play good, I'm going to sign you. I'm going to continue playing you. Hell, I'm playing in my Broncos franchise. No, I'm playing a 72 wide receiver, 72 overall wide receiver over a 79 second year wide receiver because the 72 just gets open. 72 makes plays. We are going after Jason Pignock, Pignock, uh, Pinnock, Eric Gar, Amir Speed, and Quentin Morris, other guys that I do want, young, talented guys that should be able to come in. Fill holes for us. Whether it's something long-term or short-term, that's yet to be seen. 
But still, a lot of these guys, they're going to be backups. They're going to be maybe even practice squad players, special teamers, stuff like that. And then we are going to start going after a lot of veterans, uh, a lot of mentor guys to come in, help fill that role of being able to get extra XP, at least for the preseason. A lot of these guys won't be able to make the roster just because I do like keeping players that will be able to play and not just backups. Because I am trying to limit it myself this year. We are going to try to make it to where practice squad players are the main focus in terms of if somebody goes down, try to fill that hole with a practice squad player. Okay, so we ended up getting Tyron Smith like we've seen before, Bobby Wagner. Taylor will want all on one-year deals. Terrell Edmonds is the only, is the first guy with a two-year deal, just getting nine over two, so four and a half a year. Pat Pete with one, Fakuzi with one, DJ Jones with one, Autry with one, Whitehair with one. Clyde Edwards Hilaire was signed to a four year deal, but he is he has no bonus, so we can cut him at any time for no cap hit, which you'll see with a couple other people we did do a lot with. So that is something I do end up doing. Clayus Campbell gets one year for eight. Tenio Gibson, same deal, two years, three million. You can cut him at any time. He will not affect the cap. Same thing with Jason Pinnock. Seven over fourteen over seven. No bonus. If you want to have no cap hit, uh no cap penalties. This is the way to do it on some of these players. Some players that, you know, aren't getting signed that you can kind of sit around and wait on. You can do the same thing. Four years, 12 for Jack Gibbons. Four years, eight for Bo Melton. Four years, eight for Caleb on Chase on. Four years, you know. A lot of these guys are going to have no cap, no bonuses, which means I can get out from underneath them at no time for no penalties. I do that a lot with some of these lower overall guys, some of these guys that I know I can get to sign. And it's not really cheesing. It's you know, it's some NFL teams kind of do the same thing where they put low incentive base, low bonuses, low, low stuff. They give them their signing bonus early, whatever. So that if they have to cut somebody like they need to, they can get out from underneath those contracts and they will not have to pay anything. For Janoris Jenkins there, uh, the reason why you're seeing seven for 8.4 for a lot of these mentor guys is because if I push it up to seven, the cap hits lower on that first year and I'm able to sign more mentors. It drops it from like a one point two down to a one point oh three. It's not the most crazy savings, right? I'm not saving a ton of money. But then again, these guys are gonna get cut by the end of the preseason. They're not making the opening day roster. So it will not really matter. They're lucky to be on a team for three weeks anyway. I don't know how much how many games you have to play in and if preseason counts towards your you know, how many years you've played in the NFL. But if it does then it would help those guys in real life. So we went out, got a bunch, a bunch of mentors, got a bunch of players that could fill spots. Now, of course, when we go out and sign this many people, not everybody's going to make the roster, right? Some some people get afraid, you know, oh, I just signed this guy. I can't release him or I can't trade him during preseason. You know, shit happens. You find somebody in the draft that you like better. You want to roll with somebody that you think is just going to be better for your team long term, short term, whatever. Whatever the case may be, you, can, you can't be afraid of getting rid of guys that you brought in just because you brought them in recently. Team's looking pretty good. Uh, the O-line, Robert Hainsey is going to play over Cody Whitehair to start off the season. Nicholas petit Fier and Taylor Lewan will battle in preseason for that starting spot. Verduins and Brunskill are both coming off contracts, so we can look to upgrade over them. Adoga's here now as well. A.J. Jackson, who we got for a fucking steal. Andre Dillard and Jalen Duncan are still here. They're both cut candidates at this point. Uh, Kyle Phillips is kind of in no man's land with the additions of Isaiah Hodden and Bo Melton as Kyle Phillips just hasn't really developed. He didn't play particularly great for us last season, and and he's kind of a weird receiver, right? He's 5'11". He's not a strong catcher. He's not a great route one, runner. He doesn't have burning speed. He's a, He doesn't have any particular qualities where it's like, oh, I can put him in a role and he can succeed, right? He struggled to get open at some points last season against you know good corners, and that may be a problem going forward, and we may have to look to, you know, play somebody else Bobby Wagner like I said he's more here for the mentor badge as well as the fact that he can play if we need him to but at this moment we're not going to ask him to safety is still a pretty decent weak spot even with Edmonds and Pinnock coming in Elijah Molden still isn't great I still don't like him look I don't want it's not that I don't like him as a person it's just you know when I had him on the team last year he didn't do a whole ton he kind of kept fucking up he kind of kept putting me in bad situations had to play Chris Harris a lot last year, especially on that tail end, especially pushing for those playoffs. I couldn't rely on him 
But the team's looking good going into the draft. Now, looking at mock draft five, we are down the board a little bit. We are at 12, so that will come into play of what we want to do. We are are also at 24, and they set, they're they projecting us Von Lawrence, who is actually the safety I do want. I do want him, but I think I would take him early just to make sure that he does go. Now, I understand I don't... I haven't watched a whole ton of Madden content recently over the last couple months, but from my knowledge, at least last year and at the beginning of this year, Mock Draft 5, if wherever the player says it's going to go, it was basically where it's going to go at this point. It's basically deci- been decided. It's basically just letting you know, hey, this person's going here. If you want him, you better go trade up and get him at this point. And as much as I would want to go get one of the top two edge rushers to really define this team, both James Davis and Devontae Gills, I just can't devalue the uh, amount of trade assets I, amount of draft assets I have, and I would rather just fix a lot of holes on the team than just one. And of course, the New York Giants are going to take the quarterback Matthew Bryan out of UCF. He definitely looked like one of the best quarterbacks on the board, if not the best. I don't, I didn't want to take a quarterback either way. I think Will Levis should get at least another year or two. We still have Malik Willis. We still have. Guys like uh, Trey Lance as well coming in. Tyler Huntley as well, who we didn't really address all that much. Devontae Gills goes to Washington. So Washington gives up both their edge rushers and immediately decides, you know what, we're bad enough. We're going to go ahead and take, you know, I'm going to go take another edge rusher. Rich Rogers goes to the Pats. Didn't even see who the Cardinals took. Gerald Shields, the other Iowa edge rusher, goes to the Broncos. Gilbert Davidson goes to the Bears out of Kansas State. Lonnie Fitzpatrick goes to Notre Dame. I think uh, the, who the Bears took, wouldn't that be Felix and Duz, uh, the dude the Kansas City Chiefs took last year's teammate? Uh, the Vikings take a receiver, which makes no sense, and I'll talk about that here in a second. D'Angelo Back, Black, who I thought was the best safety on the bo- on the entire board, goes early. Deion Moons, an edge rusher that I was looking at, hoping to fall to 12. And then Joseph Fowler. Now, with pick 12, I have decided that I am going to trade down. I actually got a very good offer and a very good logical reason to why we're going to trade down. Daniel Brunskill, a first of 2024, a four of 2024, a four of 2025, a six of 2025, and a six of 2026 gets us the Bears' second first round pick. So four picks later at pick 16. Okay, so we're dropping from four. Well, we're dropping from 12 to 16, but then we get a, their second round pick. Which you may say, why would you do that? It's middle of the round. Don't you have picks already around there? Yes, this is the bad pick. This must be Carolina's pick. Or, yeah, it would be. Would it be Carolina's pick, or would it be whichever one it, it isn't? Um, because they because that pick is pick thirty eight. So it's the sixth pick in the second round. It moves us up, gets us more value. Von Florence is probably the second best safety in the entire class. It is a top fit. He does. He will come in and play free safety. He should be able to come in and start right away out of Ohio State. Six foot, 197, 21 years old. Good physicals. I think he could be amazing. He could be the Kevin Byard replacement because I did decide just to leave the Kevin Byard trade alone as is. Hidden dev trait, 94 speed, 86 jumping, 85 change of direction, 91 agility, and 91 acceleration. He should be able to come in and start right away next to Amani Hooker. Next pick. At pick 24, we are taking Quentin Ayers. He is a six foot four man to man corner, 209, 22 years old. In franchise, I do like taking Quentin A uh, man to man guys a little bit. I would prefer zone, but Quentin Ayers here, six foot four. He's a freak athletically. He's going to come in, fill in that third spot, even compete against Roger McCreary and Caleb Farley, who are both coming off contract. Let's go ahead and take him. 95 speed, 91 jumping, 96 change of direction, 87 agility, 95 speed acceleration he should be able to come in like i said compete right away potentially even take a starting spot if we need him to especially if somebody else plays bad right i'm all about giving people opportunities if the other people are taking playing bad christian malone here six foot four 21 years old out of bama center he looks phenomenal the only bad part about him is his injury rating his injury rating is like an f not great, especially on the O-line. If you don't know, O-line gets injured more in Madden for some reason because their injuries are always lower. 85 strength, 69 speed, nice. 75 jumping, 74 acceleration, and 84 agility. I mean acceleration, 74 agility. 6 foot 4, 305, 21 years old out of Bama. Hidden dev trait, agile. Don't need him to be the strongest guy. Dorian Dixon here. 
a tackle who we are going to convert convert to guard mainly because he is six foot four, three thirty five. He's a little bit bigger, a little bit sturdier guy. We're going to convert him to guard, let him play more of that power role. He's going to slide into right guard across, you know, next to Christian Malone on the other side of Peter Skronsky. Dorian Dixon here. Like I said, he's going to play phenomenally. He's going to slide into guard. He's just not quite the tackle. He doesn't have the reach. He doesn't have the length. He doesn't have the speed to really uh, attack to attack those edges. Brandon Davidson, zone safety here, six foot one, 23 years old out of TCU. He looks like one of the best options on the board. The reason why we are taking him, because I don't know what the long-term solution is for that strong safety spot. Is it Amani Hooker going forward? Is it Brandon Davis? I do play a lot of three safety coverages, depending on, you know, the team we're going against and the attacks now they're they're willing to take. It was between him and one other guy. He looks like the better now fit. 91 speed, 87 jumping, 86 uh, change direction, 89 agility, and 91 acceleration. Mark Vickers, a guy that I think should be pretty good. Um, he should be a at least physical talent. He should be a, at least a good quality corner. I don't know if he's going to be a long-term guy. I don't know if he's going to have like a dev trade or anything. 5'11", 191, 21 years old out of Pittsburgh. Uh, Five foot eleven is perfectly fine with me. I don't draft big corners just to draft big corners, right? Ninety three speed, eighty four jumping, ninety three uh, change of direction. I think that was uh, eighty seven agility and ninety five acceleration. Should be a very good corner. Come and be that four string guy. Compete against Pat Pete, maybe. Lindsey Goodwell, six foot five, three twenty nine out of Louisville. I think he's a little bit more athletically gifted. He can probably bounce out to that tackle spot. Compete against Nicholas Petit Fierre, Andre Dillard, Taylor Lewan for that starting spot, or even potentially rotating in eventually if somebody were to go down. This fourth round pick, I didn't have anybody on my board that I valued enough to take here in the fourth. So I was just like looking through the picks. I'm like, okay, Green Bay's off for me a third. I'd say we go ahead and trade with them. They're in a different conference even, so it's not going to affect us too much right now. With this next pick here in the fourth, I think it's the fourth, fourth and twenty. Fourth round, pick 24. Keenan Evans, linebacker out of Michigan, 23 years old, 6'1", 238. Not the greatest physicals, but then again, physicals are kind of weird on linebackers because like Elite's considered 88 speed now or 89 speed, which is kind of crazy. Keenan Evans, though, should be able to come in, compete against Jacob Phillips for that four-string role, even potentially third-string role if we decide to move on from Bobby Wagner. 87 speed, 72 strength, 78 jumping, 81 agility, and 87 acceleration. He has plenty fine speed. I don't know why his physicals were so low. Max Smith out of Bama. Uh, he is projected to be an undrafted free agent. He was a day three guy for the most part. He has good physicals for the most part. I do look for... I, I'm a firm believer in there's plenty of value at wide receiver down the board, especially in Madden. I don't know about real life. But he should be able to come in, compete for that fifth or sixth string spot. Five foot nine slot guy out of Bama, 92 speed, 78 jumping, 94 change of direction, 90 agility, and 93 acceleration. He's a catch machine, but he cannot run around for the life of him. We're going to take his teammate, Franklin Amos, also a slot guy, six foot, 191, 21 years old out of Bama. Apparently, these Bama guys are leaving early, even though they are projected to be undrafted free agents. I guess they want to get out of town now that Nick Saban is gone. And uh, is it Kalen DeBoer? Is that is that his name? Who is now going to Bama to be the coach? I guess they just don't want to be there. Franklin Amos, though, 89 speed, 91 change of direction, 93 agility, and 95 acceleration. So quick burst, high guy. He can come in, compete for that slight job against Bo Melton and even Kyle Phillips. Here in the six, I didn't really see anything I particularly wanted, so I decided that I was going to trade down. I wasn't necessarily looking for the best value as I was looking for the most value, and the Broncos are offering that. They're not in the same division, at least, so at least we can trade with them. I prefer to trade out of conference. I know that's kind of weird, but I do that anyway. And then with that seventh round pick we picked up from the Broncos, I'm trading it to the Cardinals. Again, not looking for the best value, just looking for the most value. A lot of these late round picks I can use to just barely increase trade offers and be able to push them through. So I'm not having to spend a fifth or a fourth in a player when I could have spent a sixth and gotten it just as easy. Like I said before, I do increase the draft class, okay? I'm going to say it once. I'm going to say it again. I do increase the draft class. So interior O-line got increased. Um, D-tackles got increased. And corners got increased. So, 
the rest are normal. Um, I even put QB down a week because I knew I wasn't going to take Will Levis, and I knew that QBs are normally fine enough. Uh, receivers I even put down a week, and that's why Franklin Amos and uh, Max Smith weren't particularly great. I kept linebackers at normal. I kept edge rushers at normal. I kept safeties at normal. I kept tackles at normal. Tight ends I pushed down to weak because I think when there's too many good tight ends, then every team has a tight end. I don't think that's how it is in real life. The only training camp player dev trait increase was Will Levis. So here's the throw. Bang. He gets it. Dev trait increase plus one skill point. Gold bad for him. After the preseason, I decided to play it. I didn't really decide to grab any clips from it. These are some of the trades that we did end up making Bobby Wagner to the Chargers for a sixth and two cut candidates just to kind of help out salary issues. These are guys that I felt like were expandable that were going to get cut anyway that I decided to trade off to a team so that they could have them. Tyler Huntley, Antonio Gibson, and two sevens goes to the Bills for a five and a six and two cut candidates. This increases their backup running back. Let's get some a better backup quarterback and they get some value in the seventh round as well. I was potentially going to cut them. Dylan Radunes and Robert Hainsey also cut candidates. With the addition of Chris Malone, Dorian Dixon, and even uh, Goodwell, and some of the veteran free agents we added, there's no room for them here on the roster, so we did end up having to trade them. Josiah DeGuara, Andre Dillard, and Chuma Adoga. I wasn't asking for anything in return. The only thing that I ended up getting was Brian Allen, who I later cut in a seventh-round pick. Their starting left tackle was William Sweet. Or Sweat. I... Fuck, is it sweet or sweat? He was their starting left tackle, so that's why I gave them Andre Dillard. He was going to get cut anyway. Jazar DeGuire, Josiah DeGuire was also going to get ch- cut. Chuma Adoga was also probably going to get cut. Decided to get rid of both of them. Elijah Molden will be heading to the Kansas City Chiefs, potentially competing for a Super Bowl. We're trading him and a seventh to the Chiefs, Tommy DeVito, and a sixth. Tommy DeVito was a four-string quarterback, and then we get a sixth in return. He's, Elijah Molden's not going to go in and start right away, but he is backup. They didn't need a free safety. He's going to go in and fill that backup role for them at least. Like I said, a lot of these guys are going to be cut candidates. Like, And you might be like, well, you're getting a bunch of value in return. If you guys want me to, I can just swap picks from here on out for a lot of these guys. You know, especially going into next season. Terrell Edmonds and Fakuzi, though, are going to a team where they're both going to be starting potentially. So we're trading a 6, a 6, and a 7 with them. For Sean Clifford and Carl Brooks, Carl Brooks will try to put down on the practice squad, if anything, and let him develop for a fourth as well. Like I said, Fakuzgi and Edmonds will go in and compete for starting spot. They're both guys that Green Bay actually wanted, so this does help out them, right? Not all these trades are going to be just based on me trying to get rid of people. And I didn't really show a whole ton of cuts. I'm going to go over some of the notable names that we did end up losing, but I'm going to show you guys a lot of the upgrades that we have. Hell, oh, there's five for Will Levis. There's just a ton of value here. We're going to upgrade all these guys. I don't show you the individual upgrades because it just takes too long, especially when you have this many stacked up for both like Tajay Spears and Will Levis. But here's the team going into the season. We did end up getting rid of Kyle Phillips. We cut him. He went down to the practice squad. He did not remain there. He was picked up by a team. We did end up cut, getting rid of, of course, Antonio Gibson. We got rid of Tyler Huntley. So it's going to be Will Levis, Lance, and Willis. Of course, all the veteran guys that you guys saw with the mentor badge got cut more than likely. So that, there is that. So the starting, so the O-line goes as followed. Tyron Smith, A.J. Jackson at that left tackle position. Skaronsky by himself at left guard. Goodwill at right tackle with Petit Fierre and Lawan. Dixon and Saylor at right guard. And Malone and, Malone and Whitehair at center. Shag, Wiley, and Sample, and Morris all at tight end. Morris is going to fill in at that fullback role. Spears, Haskins, and Edwards Hilaire. Uh, Max Smith, Franklin Amos, Isaiah Hodgins, Bo Melton, uh, Traylon Burks, and D Hop are the six receivers we're going to be carrying for the start of the season. Normally, when injuries start to happen, one of the first looks I go to is cutting one of the receivers, as I don't always need six. I rarely ever get to my six string receiver. That's just something that rarely ever happens. The defensive line, I had to go with, you know, potential, what role do they fill, all that stuff to determine who goes and who stays. We ended up keeping Calais Campbell, Danico Autry, Kevin Givens, DJ Jones, and Jeffrey Simmons. I think we're only running five out of there as of right now. Joseph Asai, Arden Key, Clarence Farrell, Harold Landry, uh, Caleb Chason, and Yatir Gross Matos, all of our edge rushers. 
They all fill different roles for us. Jack Givens, Shair, and Keenan Evans, the rookie, all made it. Jacob Phillips got cut at safety, like we like you saw. Edmonds and uh, Elijah Molden both got sent off, so we're keeping Josh Thompson, the unsung hero of last year. Jason Pinnock, Brendan Davis, Vaughn Florence, and Amani Hooker. Roger McCreary, Mark Vickers, Quentin Ayers, and Caleb Farley all make the team, as well as Pat Pete and Darius Rush. Potentially, a you know he's going to be a special teamer. The team looks good. It does. Like I said before, I'm not afraid to move off of guys if I don't feel like they fit my team needs or if they don't fit a role for me. Now, of course, certain players I think you have to divide, you know, uh, make a role around. You know, if it's you know Jeffrey Simmons just because he doesn't fit in my prototypical you know packages, I need to go out and make him a role. I need to go out and design a role based around him, right? But then some of these guys, like Harold Landry, just because he's a superstar, doesn't actually mean anything. After all the upgrades Trey Wolf had, he got up to a 71. We started him. He was a 63 in the offseason. I ended up moving him back up to a 66 where he was where he was at at the beginning at the end of last season. And now he's up to a 71 with upgrades and stuff like that after preseason. Max Smith is going to be doing the kick, kick and punt return duties. Mark Vickers will be backing him up. We did get rid of Stevenson. I'm gonna be honest. He just didn't provide enough value at the receiver position to really keep him around, and that's just something we had to address going forward. I couldn't continue to sit here and be like, "Oh, but he's a good kick returner. He's a good kick returner. We gotta keep him, guys. We gotta keep him." These are the specialists going into the season as well. We're gonna start McCreary and Vickers in the slot with Pinnock slowly falling behind. Joseph Asai and Harold Landry are gonna be the two uh, pass rush specialists. Nico Autry. Kalis Campbell, uh, Calais Campbell, and Jeffrey Simmons going to be the rush D tackles. Shire, Gibbons, and Evans. They can all play that sub linebacker role. Not like last year where it was only Monty Rice and Shire really be able to play that role. In the slot, Melton, Amos, and uh, Smith. Right? Yeah. And then Tajay Spears and Edwards Hilaire and Hassan Haskins are all going to rotate in those running back spots. Special team, uh, practice squad, it got fucking destroyed. We had a bunch of guys. We had the guard that we traded for from the Patriots. We had Carl Brooks. We had a bunch of guys sitting here. And as you can see, a lot of them got picked up. Eric Garr got picked up. Like I said, Kyle Phillips got picked up. A shit ton of people got picked up. These are the only guys worth mentioning. I did pick up Chad, uh, Cameron Thomas and Kyron Johnson, who would be a good special team or if we do need to bring up an edge rusher later in the season. Like I said, the team looks good. But with that being said, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video or any other videos here on my channel, I'd appreciate it if you guys do stick around and subscribe, as I will have more videos like this coming out soon. I have this and the first episode of Season 2 recorded now, if you're hearing this. So, uh, I appreciate your guys' support on some of the recent videos. They've done very well. I'm gonna, I, actually have a, I do actually have a plan for the next video, kind of like the Justin Fields versus Caleb Williams video that you saw. But like I said, if you guys enjoy this content or any other content here on my channel, I'd appreciate it if you guys do stick around and subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos like this. But with that being said, guys, I'm out. Peace.